Let us begin our celebration with the sign that saves us. In the name of God, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Most Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I hope everyone's doing well. Today in the scripture, it's focusing really on one thing. It's all about fear. And it's a really good teaching today to really look within our hearts huh, and asking ourselves, what is it that you and I fear the most? And Jesus wants to meet us in there and help us to overcome those fears. And I think we all have them, especially during these days I see with COVID, you know, with the virus, with the civil unrest, people are anxious, people are afraid. So this uh, liturgy today, Jesus wants to address that, look at it, and help us in our fears. So in this moment, can I ask us to um, bring before our God all of our fears, all of them, huh? our deepest fears. What is the opposite of fear? Faith, trust. So let's take this moment and bring everything to our Lord, asking our God to transform our fears into faith, trust. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. See you. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O oh Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. San Paolo Apostolo ai Romani. Fratelli, come a causa di un solo uomo il peccato è entrato nel mondo, 
che con il peccato la morte, così tutti gli uomini si è propagata la morte perché tutti hanno peccato. Fino alla legge infatti c'è il peccato nel mondo e anche se il peccato non può essere imputato quando manca la legge, la morte regnò da Adamo fino a Mosè, anche su quelli che non avevano peccato, a somiglianza della trasgressione di Adamo, il quale figura di colui che doveva venire. Ma il dono di grazia non è come la, la caduta. Se infatti per la caduta di un solo tutti morirono, molto di più la grazia di Dio, e il dono concesso in grazia del solo uomo Gesù Cristo, si sono riversati in abbondanza su tutti. Parola di Dio. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor a secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my Heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. See, the peace of Christ be with each and every one of you. Will you join me in the Hail Mary? Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I think um, this uh, scripture focus on fear is kind of personal to me. When I think of in my life, I see so many people who are afraid, who are paralyzed by their fears, you know, and it's all in their mind usually. And it gets me crazy, because I see that they're just so limited, they put themselves in that box. Today, the scripture opens with Jeremiah. He's kind of like a complicated figure. He's a guy who was sent to become a prophet, and it's true, he went against persecution, all these difficulties, he was called to preach against these false prophets. And the first thing he felt was, Fear. He was afraid, naturally, and he felt, I'm too young, I can't do this. And so he was afraid. He was afraid for the limitations he saw in himself, but he also was afraid of the daunting task. And that's kind of like the two sides of the same coin of fear. It's a mistake I think we all make. We encounter our own limitedness, our own littleness, we think, I can't do this. 
or we project this big, um, uh, unimaginable, daunting task on the external, and we think, that's too much, I can never do that. And I think of the two things we're facing now, you know, COVID, a big pandemic, it's, you know, global, or the civil unrest, and we look at ourselves, and that's a mistake. But in this first reading, if you heard it, as he's speaking and he's saying, there's terrors all around me, they're setting traps, something amazing happens. All of a sudden, he says, he comes to a realization, he says, but the Lord God is with me, and he is a mighty champion. What does he do? It's a game changer. Instead of looking at the two things, my own littleness or the big problem, he chooses a third, and it is faith, huh? Instead of putting our focus on my littleness or on the big task, he says, you know, I'm gonna look at something bigger, God. And what does that mean? Faith conquers fear. It's the antithesis, it's the antidote to fear. And some until later was Peter. Do you remember that moment when Peter is actually walking on the water? How he's walking on the water, he's looking at Christ. What happens? He diverts his attention, he starts looking at the wind. Then what does he do? Falls like a rock. Fear, whatever we give into fear, it has a power over us. Huh? What we're called to is faith. And Jesus says powerfully today something so provocative. He says, fear no one. No one. Fear no one. Think of how radical that is. But he explains it. And he explains it by either you could say relativizing it or prioritizing our fear. He says, don't be afraid of anyone. If you're gonna be afraid, don't be afraid of that person who can kill your body. If you're gonna be afraid, be afraid of those who can kill your soul. And who is that? Only God, huh? Only God. He's saying, put your fear in the right place. God is over everything. I like that little um, uh, point that uh, Emerson wrote, he wrote, fear paralyzes. Faith empowers. Fear imprisons. Faith liberates. Fear disheartens. Faith encourages. Fear sickens. Faith heals. In the scripture, 2 Timothy 7, it says, God did not give us a spirit of fear. He gave us a spirit of courage. He gave us a spirit of faith. Um, even in the uh, Romans, in the old times, Seneca once said, we suffer more in our imagination than we do in reality. Think of that statement. We suffer more in our imagination than in our reality. I know when I was studying psychology, I was amazed at something called systematic desensitization. I don't know if you ever heard about this, but it's a therapy for those who have irrational phobias. A phobia is an irrational fear, like uh, arachnophobia. They're afraid of spiders. And you know, one of the therapies of systematic desensitization, what they do is they actually put one spider on your finger, then two, five, slowly they increment, slowly. And what they find is, it's worse in my mind than it is in reality. Because we would think, I would die if I had one spider, you know? Because they're so afraid. It's irrational. But when they have more than 100 of them, here's the worst case scenario, and I'm alive. Huh? It's worse in our mind. Um, St. Francis had the same beautiful story. I don't know if you're familiar with the Wolf of Gubbio. One of our favorite Franciscan stories, there was a wolf terrorizing Gubbio, the city. And he says, I want to go meet the wolf. And he had eaten people. And they're like, Francis, you're crazy. You can't go up and meet the wolf. He will eat you. No, I'm going to face my fears. So he goes up to him. And what does he do? He, in the sign of the cross, he blesses him. So then, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. He puts his faith in God, and then he does something beautiful. And it's really like pedagogical. It's teaching us how we confront our fears. What does he say? 
He says, brother wolf. So he pulls him into relationship and then he gives it to him. He says, you have been terrorizing this and he doesn't hold back. So whatever we're afraid of, our enemy confronting him, telling him exactly like it is. And then he asks God to transform him. And what's beautiful is the wolf winds up being transformed, tamed, and he actually extends his paw and they reconcile. And it's a beautiful reminder of the truth of the cross. Really, it always goes back to that. What is that cross? That's the greatest hope we have. It shows us that the power of God's love can do that. It can transform a symbol of torture, death, grace and fear, into a symbol of salvation, a symbol of life. That's the power that love has. The most beautiful line when we think about our fears, Perfect love casts out all fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. Huh? That's when we remember that we have a God who is all powerful, a mighty God, a mighty champion, just like Jeremiah uh, told us in the first reading, right? We have a God who is in control of everything. Providence. That's why they say there's so much anxiety in the secular world. Once you lose God, you lose his providence, everything's up for grabs. I don't know what's going on. But when you're rooted in God, when you're rooted in a relationship of love with God, and you have perfect love, cast out all fear. You don't have to fear no one. No one. That's an amazing lesson today. And I think of the people I know who are with so much fear, they won't go out of the house. And it's not just the virus, in their lives, they allow themselves to be so limited. And this lesson is a game changer. Why? It teaches us faith, rooted in love of God. Then we have a God who is all powerful, he loves us, he's a father. He only wants our good. He's in control of everything, everything we face. All the problems, all the worries are for our good. If we trust in our God, they can be transformed with his love. Amen. Let us now stand and profess our creed. In our creed, by the way, um, in Latin, they use the word for believe, it's um, fidelis. And um, it has a deeper connotation than what we say. We say, I believe in God. Well, I believe there's walls over there, I believe the can't, I believe, that's nothing. Belief in the Latin has a um, connotation of trust. It means I believe and I trust. Sometimes when I'm praying the creed, I often put that in my mind. I don't just believe in God, I trust in God. That's what belief has that depth and that profound meaning of it is. When we say that, don't just say I believe intellectually up here, in the sense of the mind, intellectually, no. I believe is a deeper reality. So let us pray that together. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe, that means I trust in the Holy Spirit. I trust, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. I trust and I believe in the communion of saints. I trust and I believe in the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting, amen. Let us now turn our prayer our hearts to our God, and lift up, trusting in the kindness of our Heavenly Father, let us offer our prayers this day.
For the Holy Father, may he continue to grow in holiness and wisdom in his service to the living and true God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For our leaders and those in authority, may the Lord provide his grace for the peaceful resolution of conflicts in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For people throughout the world who are persecuted for their faith, may God's love give them courage as they stand for Christ in the darkness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community and visitors who have joined us, that sharing in the Eucharist we may grow in unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, that as the gracious gift of Jesus Christ overflows, they may taste the sweetness of the eternal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. The Mass this morning is being offered for the deceased members of the De Pasquale family, deceased members of the Verano family, Frank Crea, Frank Anessi, Giuseppe Ferrullo, Stanz Domenico, Enrico and Dora Jan Marco, Domenico Alighieri, Federico, Enrico Ricci, Benny Federico, Frank Federico, Carlo Iacobiello, Vittorio D'Amore, Salvatore Tizano. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our pastor, Father Michael, and for Father Claude, Father Federico, and all the priests who serve us in this area. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, medical personnel, and others coordinating a response to the coronavirus, may God give them wisdom and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those infected with or recovering from the coronavirus, may Jesus, the divine physician, offer them hope and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died from the coronavirus, may they know the peace and joy of God's love through all eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for your own very special intention. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To pray today that we might only fear separating ourselves from the God who loves us by rejecting him through sin. For this we praise the Lord. We thank you, Father, for your steadfast love. Please hear and answer our prayers this day according to your wisdom. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray, my brothers and my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and the glory of his name, for I the of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of consolation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and the archangels, with the thrones and the dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. favorite lines in scripture is in the world you will have trouble so jesus warns us uh, it's not going to be easy in the world you will have trouble but take heart i have overcome the world i have overcome it and this is the love he offers us perfect love casts out all fear this is our lord you are indeed holy O lord the font of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Francis, Saint Clair, Saint Michael, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My brothers and my sisters, let us now stand and lifting up our hearts, let us pray in the very words that Jesus himself taught us and we pray with that filial intimacy, that love of a child for their father, that trusting intimacy that Jesus revealed to us, that we have with God the Father. And so we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with God's spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of God's peace. Jeremiah can say today, but the Lord is with us. He is a mighty champion. Almighty. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am God.
We just pray this morning that the love that God gives to us allows us to be united with Him so that we truly do not fear anyone that we are surrounded by Christ and allowing Him to empower us with His love. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and the precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our pledge of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God now bless you, the Father, Son, and the Most Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks. Have a blessed Sunday.